Hi guys, welcome back to Return of the Nerd. Right, it's time for an update. Uh, the last couple of weekends, um, I've been opening my store. I had a flash sale last last weekend that went really well, and then uh, the weekend, you know, so today's Monday, so I'm busy shipping out all the orders from, uh, you know, this week's uh, uh, my store. It was it wasn't a sale per se, but I do give free shipping. I try to keep my my prices on items um, reasonable, you know, uh, not astronomical eBay taking the Mickey prices or, you know, so low that I'm just giving my figures away for free and then I'm losing out. So I have to strike a balance and I think a lot of you really support small independent retailers such as myself and I, and I really, really appreciate all the help. And I've been branching out into different toy lines because I realized that you know just selling black series over and over again is not gonna it's not a viable business model I mean I do like action figures um, I like all action figures to be honest with you um, it just so happens that the black series and Star Wars are my all-time favorite so and I know more about that but anyway nevertheless I'm really happy because like what happened was is I started selling uh, NECA right so like beautiful I mean look at the condition of this from 2001 this is over tw 20 years old okay ding 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 the 2001 Godzilla so gorgeous or maybe it's not 20 years old maybe it's just like a retro I need to you know like these days you're not sure whether is that vintage or is that just like a it's been re-released and it looks retro I have to do more homework I'm studying McFarlane Toy Biz um, yeah NECA you name it Super 7 I'm gonna get into it but this is beautiful let's show that again and I love the Japanese anything with Japanese on the back looks really nice so I sold a few of those um, and then the big one for this weekend was I don't know why but people this wasn't even listed on my site but people kept on emailing me my business because uh, I have a contact sheet on my on my blog site and keep people keep asking me do you have Droidica and I'm like yes I do have look at this is my face I have a big head all right look at the size of this bloody thing so yes we do have Droidicas, I have uh, quite a few of them. If you want one, you just reach out to me, okay? Let me know. Got lots of shipping of those to do today. I was really worried because they're so big and they wouldn't fit in the box, you know, because we have a, a two kilogram uh, restriction on our what we can ship and we have uh, dimensions that must follow the regulations in Taiwan. But it's, it, this actually is very light for... I thought it was going to be super heavy, but it's not. It's actually a very light figure, um, but just the packaging is huge. But not too huge for us to help you and to send it, okay, if you're really looking for one. Um, other things that made me happy were um, G.I. Joe fans, like really getting into the, the card backs and buying those off of me. Thank you very much. And I've got some really super old card backs as well. Um, you know, like Zartan and uh, stuff that came out quite a way back. And, uh, oh God, this guy. I can't believe I found this guy. The Holy Grail. I mean, this guy caused me so much grief last year because I got my orders cut and Hasbro didn't make enough. And now when you go on eBay, this guy's like 200, 300 US dollars. You name it. It's just a ridiculous price. So I put this up on my store for 99 US dollars, but that includes shipping. And I think that's a fair price considering you try find one of these. You try finding one of these, you know, it's so hard. I got one. Um, put him over here carefully. Don't lose it. Um, yeah. And then... We've got <laughs> TVC was actually pretty cool as well. I sold a whole bunch of the prototypes. Bling 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 bling. Ah. Uh, the prototypes, Mandalorian from I think it was from last year. We've got a whole bunch of these left in store. So what I do is because I got a storage room, I've actually got two. I've got one in my house. My house is just full of uh, uh, Hasbro boxes and toy boxes and my own collection. Um, 
and then I have another place where I've just got tons of stuff. So every time, every week when I think about mm, what can I put on my store this weekend, I, I do spend like two or three days going through thousands of items and thinking, now that's interesting, people would like that, I'll put that up on the store. And every week I try to keep it fresh and so there's something new and uh, just not repeat, repeat, you know, repeat the same stuff every week. So it makes it more cool. This guy sold like a mofo okay this is actually my favorite out of the uh the comic book edition uh bulbas that came out last year this one's one of my favorites and yes we still do have the kenner the uh the original kenner one as well i might put the kenner one up this weekend on my store and uh somebody managed to scoop this up <laughs> wait a minute oh, i just want to pop every bubble Oh, we got the skiff. How beautiful is that, man? So nice. So skiff, like even TVC vehicles, things like that. If they fit in our package and we're able to ship them overseas, then I'm going to have them available for you guys. All right. So that's cool. What else? Uh, toy biz. Yeah, I had, <laughs> I have some really old stuff from the 90s. <laughs> it's a little bit um, out there. Like this guy. <laughs> You know, I sold this guy. This guy's heavy. I mean, it's like, compare the weight of... Oh, I can barely hold him. It's like, this guy and, and, and the Droidica. I mean, this is, this is like almost freaking a kilogram here. So heavy. And also I sold, um, I think it was uh, Apocalypse. Because I've got a bunch of... Yeah, this is the one that was up on my store. Okay, this is the original Toy Biz early, this is the 90s uh, Juggernaut. I know there's been lots of versions of him since, but this one's just like kind of vintage now. Someone asked me about this guy, and then they, they went for, uh, we had Apocalypse. So he's still available, and uh, I, I've got lot, quite a lot of Toy Biz, because I really enjoyed collecting them. Um, so I'll put some more of those up on the, this weekend's uh, store window, okay? Alright, more news, um, yeah, we got the double pack, we got, uh, I'm thinking this is going to be my next unboxing video because I want to check out this guy here, um, there's been a lot of talk about the Super Battle Droid, and, um, you know, he's coming out, we know he's going to come out soon in the single pack, and I want to know, well, is, is he just a straight repack, or is there any differences whatsoever, is this a good quality figure a lot of the droids to be honest with you are they look good but you know because of the the weight distribution the articulation they don't stand up properly and it's very difficult to get them into poses and that's that was always a problem from the beginning there was the kx model which is from the rogue one series that couldn't i couldn't get that thing to stand up um without using blue tack and then just like sticking him on my desk um what was the another one recently? Oh, the Magna Guard was another one that just looks beautiful aesthetically, and uh, but you need to if you don't have a stand, good luck making him stand up, you know, because the legs are too weak and the, and the like the weight of the upper body compared to the lower body just feels like it's not in proportion. So you've got to get the. I know this this seems very rudimentary, the engineering of an action figure, an adult action figure. You know, the, the body mechanics and the weight distribution is very important, especially for the droids, because droids have skinny limbs. Unless it's, uh, let me see, unless it's this guy here, you know, R5-D4, I mean, you're not going to have a problem with, like, any of the Astromechs or these guys, because they're going to stand up really, really well. So these have been selling very well, but then any droid that, um, is you know bipedal it doesn't sell very well because people know they don't stand up so Hasbro could you please fix that problem and I'm just wondering is it gonna be the same with this fella here the same the same issue so something to think about if you guys already have that you can write in the comment section below and let me know well let me put this back um, as far as as far as the two packs uh, go this is probably the best one for your money I think um, this one I did a, a video that was my last unboxing I really enjoy 
like taking these guys out and posing them i really like this and then the money i think the money i paid for this the cost was was reasonable um whereas like the 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 hasbro pulse exclusives i feel the price is it's uh crossing the line into unreasonable um you know trying to get hold of a mace windu with the clone trooper that double pack is like near um impossible and the price is just um i want to basically uh shoot myself in the no just um <laughs> and i haven't had any of those double packs on the wholesalers lists here which is really strange i feel like since hasbro pulse has become available in taiwan the the wholesalers and the retailers have you know the things that we that can choose from has shrunk by like 50%, which I think is unfair. And again, nobody's buying anything off of Hasbro Pulse in Taiwan. Very few people are willing to pay that kind of money. It's overpriced because you've got to pay for it. There's a price tag plus the shipping fee, and then you've got all sorts of problems with it turning up and it's damaged. So they don't trust the shipping either. So just that's not, I don't think that's a very successful, I don't think it's. Uh, Hasbro Pulse here is like a success. In fact, Hasbro Pulse, to be honest, like should only be for very high-end um, items such as Haslab. You know, so for example, we just had news that the we had a leak that the Cantina is going to be the next vintage collection Haslab project, which is okay with me. I think that's fine. I would love that, or or, or a Death Star, something like that. Um. But um, just for Hasbro Pulse, just to put, you know, almost every item that they release and they just just stick it up on Hasbro Pulse for like full recommended retail price. And sometimes I feel like that's above the recommended retail price and the shipping. I don't think you're doing yourselves any favor, Hasbro, you know, and then very quickly, anything that's popular will just go out of stock. And it's like, sorry, we don't have no more left. And then that just makes everyone angry. So, yeah, Hasbro Pulse, because Hasbro Pulse, you're supposed to be, I thought the whole idea of it was you just sell the high-end items, like the Sail Barge and the Razor Crest, or, yeah, you can have, there's nothing wrong with having a Hasbro exclusive, but when I go to Hasbro Pulse and I scroll through the G.I. Joe section and the Star Wars section, I think... That's pretty much everything that's been released. Why would I do that? I'm I'm a retailer. The wholesalers can just give me that, and I should I I I, sh I should get a much better price. So it kind of feels like Hasbro Pulse are just kicking the retailers in the bollocks, in the balls, right, and taking away our business. But at the same time, you're not helping the situation because the collectors here they're not dumb. They're not. They're like I'm not buying it for that price. I want to buy it from the retailers who, you know, for a cheaper price. And because I like, I like the store online. So why are you taking away that experience from me? I just, ugh. okay. That's my gripe for this video. Right, moving on. Um, yes, I found, I had a couple of guys ask me about uh, Jesse and Fives. We've got lots of Jesse. And I think I've got three of these left. Uh, Arc Trooper Fives. He was the one that was... Um, he went out of stock really quick, and it was hard to find him. Um, so I do have a few more fives if you're interested. And what's the rest of the news? I'm just getting ready now for the weekend to think about what new items I can put up on my store for this week. And I'm thinking ahead to the future because there's lots of Comic-Cons coming up. Um, uh, the end of this month, isn't it? The London MCM Comic-Con. Uh, maybe we'll get some new reveals for that. And we've got um, the Acolyte, which is in about ooh, like two, three weeks now. And it's a real like unknown. Everybody <laughs> biting their nails, just praying that this is going to be uh, like really decent. It's going to be good. And then people are going to connect with it and then want to buy the merchandise, you know. So I'm, I've got my fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, that's about it right for now. Right, so you guys, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you again in another video. I'm going to give you another update and I'll do an unboxing, okay? 
and I'll see you next time. May the force be with you always.